Hello. All right, I'm Craig, and this is Diary of an Angry Scottish Golfer. Today, I'm going to be filming a full round, every shot, treating it a bit more seriously, like a medal, like a competition. I'm going to do these during the winter. I'm going to try and put one of these up for a month. I'm trying to really concentrate over every shot, treat it as much like a medal as I can, and I've really lucked out with the weather. It's absolutely amazing. Slight wind, but nothing to really moan about. Yeah, so there's not really a huge agenda for today. I'm just going to try and concentrate, film every shot, see how I do. Right, here we go. First hole at Rathole, 244 yard par 4. Usually I'd hit a 2 iron, try and get the green. It's too cold to be doing that, so I want to take something that's going to leave me just short of the bunker. 4 iron in hand, aiming at the bunker, trying a little fade off it. Come on, Craigie boy. Oh, good start. Good start, Craig. Block on to the other fairway. Good. Right, we're in a good spot here. Ended up not too bad, 51 yards off a mat, straight over a wee bunker. The pin's quite tight towards that bunker, so you need to carry it. Come on, buddy, 51. Yeah, good pitch, good pitch. Get tight, get tight. Birdie chance coming up. Hit a good pitch there, sets up a good birdie chance. Greens are quite slow, so it's important to make sure you give it a good whack, give it a good chance. It's just off the right edge, doesn't really move much because of how slow it is, but you need to give it a good whack. Get in. Oh, robbed. Robbed. Taps in. Go on, act like you're not happy with the par, but secretly, you're very chuffed. Right, level par moves on to the second. Two iron in hand, 326 yard par four. Going to try and thread the needle between the two big trees in front of me. Again, feeling like I'm playing a fade, it tends to just go quite straight. Good shot, straight down the middle. Happy days. Right, first decision of the day coming up. I've got 109 yards, which is usually just a little comfortable pitching wedge. Little tiny one, but I feel like it's a bit windy for that. If I hit it, it's just going to balloon up in there. So, thought is, back foot a 9 iron, try and hit it a little bit lower. Pins at the back anyway, so I can afford to go a little bit longer. So, big tree in the distance is the line. Back foot 9 iron. Let's get it back there. Good strike. Properly ballooned it though. It's going to leave a long putt. Not a bad shot, I looked down at the whole way. I've got about 30 foot here, second green. I'm trying to really concentrate and get the pace right. I want to try and feel like my backstroke and follow through are the same distance. Just moving a hair off the left edge. I think it's great, quite flat this green, so it's not going to move much. Same distance, maybe a little bit longer on the follow through. Yeah, not bad. It did break a bit more than I thought. Yeah, that's obviously what I'm saying. Broke a little bit more than I thought. Part of the second, fine, move on. Right, onto the third hole. Play here for me. Pins on the top left hand side, so I want to be down the right. Pitching up the green makes it a lot easier. Two irons going to bring that bunker into play, trying to avoid that. So for me, it's just a three iron off the tall tree in the distance. Try to play a little fade. Or just hook it. That's also fine. Leave yourself the hardest pitch down the green. Good. I feel like good golf's leaving yourself easy decisions and I've not left myself an easy decision here. I've got 83 yards to a back pin and I'm thinking between a 52 and a 56. 52 would be like a three quarter one will go about 80 yards. I think I could easily go big with that. So I've decided to hit a 56, which is going to be a fuller shot, but I think it can't really go big. Fuller shots with this can sometimes fade off to the right and you can end up ballooning it and hitting a big block, which is exactly what I've ended up doing here. A pretty basic bump and run up the green. For some reason, when the ground's as soft as it was, as wet as it was, these make me really nervous. So it's usually a little 9-iron bump and run. I decided to try and go with an 8-iron just because it's so wet underfoot. Landing it pretty much maybe a yard, two yards on the green, it should kick up quite close. Pushed it slightly, but landed it where I wanted it to. Ran out nicely. Happy days. Tap in for a 4. These aren't given at the moment, though, so... Par, par, par start. Happy days. Move on. Fourth hole, try to play another fadey one. It's just my shot at the moment, trying anyway. Take the left half out of play. Fade off the bunker on the left hand side of the green. Let's see it. Come on, Tiger. That's not as bad as it ended up on the Pro Dresser. It was a little bit left, but 
not quite that bad. I left myself 73 yards, which is a really comfortable number for me. The wind's pretty downwind, so this shot goes about 70 yards. I'm thinking the, the extra three yards will be taken care of by the wind. This is just a smooth 56. Yeah, it's right down it. Happy days. Nice and close. Sets up a good look at birdie here. Moving off the left-hand side. Just don't peek. Left-hand side, trust the line, trust your read. Don't look up. Come on, left edge. Boom, birdie. Gets under par. Happy days. Happy, happy days. One under. Come on. Fifth hole. Quite difficult off this tee for me anyway. I'm trying to cut the corner with a little fade. Good camera angle as well, getting blasted by the sun. Uh, thing to look out for here. See that van? Keep an eye on that van because I was absolutely bricking it when that was in there. I mean, that cannot have been far away. Dodged the van and ended up hitting a really good drive. Got 131 yards uphill. Wind's not into, but it's not downwind. It's just moving around all over the place. 131 yards for me is usually a pitching wedge. But because it's uphill and with the wind, I figure it's playing the best part of 140, maybe even just a little bit over. So I've decided to go down to an 8-iron, but try to just flight it on that bunker with a wee draw. Hey, good. Right down it. It looked great in the air. Came a little bit short, so a bit of a lengthy putt coming up. About 30 foot uphill. Greens were really slow, so really need to give this a whack. It's moving left to right. It's maybe a, just a little bit outside the left edge, but it has to be hit quite hard. Same pace, same distance, back and through. Again, again. Ah, oh, close. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> Hardest hole in the course though, take apart, move on, easy. Um, my focus isn't necessarily going to be on score, this is something that I'm working on with my golf psychologist Tom. Um, my focus isn't really on my score, because the way we see that, or the way it's been explained to me is that's an unstable measure of success, in that if I score well, my confidence and my um, happiness, I guess, essentially is going to be really high, but if I score poorly, my happiness is going to be directly linked to that. Whereas if I try and link it to something a bit more that I'm in control of, like the process that I'm going through, so it, then it's a lot more stable in terms of like a measure of success in that I'm not going to be really depressed one week and really happy the next week. I'm just going to try and, and hopefully it'll make me less of a to play with, less of a pain to play with because sometimes uh, I have been known to lose the head and wine. First time I've ever filmed with a lot of people around, getting a wee bit more confident so I don't really worry about what they say or whatever and uh, I also put the camera down on the, well for my second shot and I was like over it, hit my shot and I heard some guy walking down the floor shout, you're swing shy. So I was like, cheers mate. Criticisms always appreciated. Snood. Getting ready to hit the next shot. <sighs> What's fun is that there's loads of people around and I'm waiting for the green to clear on a par four. So that's always gonna end up in a good shot when people come around and are like, why haven't you hit yet? A little bit added nerves on this tee shot now because I've waited for the green to clear and the group behind me is standing on the left hand side of where you can see watching me. So I do feel a bit of added pressure to try and hit the green. It's off the front tee so it's not playing as full long as it's distance. The green side bunker is a pretty good line. I'm trying to hit a little fade off that, just back over the trees. Come on, big drive. Pulled it again, but that's not a bad miss. Down the fifth, should be a pretty straightforward pitch onto the green. So a little pitch here, 30 yards maybe. To me, it looks like there's absolutely no room between the bunker and the flag. I haven't hit off a mat, which makes it a little bit tricky again. Ended up properly knifing it ran straight through not ideal so sets up a chance outside chance of a birdie it doesn't really feel like it's an easy putt again the greens are so slow i feel like this is breaking off the right but i have to properly wrap it and it's actually just not really moved maybe moved at the end but not really at all tap in par i'll take that all day to be honest i'll happily take that look moody but inside i'm thrilled Made a par there. I hit a decent enough drive, but the pitch 
I had to use a mat. It's proper winter now, so I'm, you're using mats in the fairways and it's actually preferred lies all over the course now because the rough's really wet. So you could even use get away with using a mat in the rough. In some instances, it would help. But on that one, I'd folded the mat up a bit funny and it, it was sitting on like a severe downslope type deal. A uh, severe downslope. I wasn't sitting on a severe downslope. That's absolute nonsense. It was on the downslope and uh, I was a bit nervy about knife in it. Yeah, but I had a good drive. Um, it was funny because the dude on the tee didn't see the guys were only halfway down the fairway when he came over like I was waiting for them to go because I could drive that green nearly if I had to get on and uh, I was waiting for the guys to go and the guy walks over and he's like is there a reason why you're waiting and it's like uh, yeah they're they're like a hundred yards down the fairway and they seen them and he was just like oh it's funny when you like you go into an altercation or whatever you've got you're already at like a seven like he was already at a seven when he came over and then I, I just was like eh, it was just there look just immediately changed he was like oh oh well if i'm able to commit to the process over every shot and regardless of where it goes I, I, that for me is good that for me is all i want all i can do all i want to do if you made it this far you might as well subscribe get the numbers up in it like the video as well if you are enjoying it. That would really make my ego very happy. Seventh hole here. There's out of bounds all the way up the left. I always get a little bit nervous when there's a hole with an out of bounds up the left because my bad shot's a big hook. So the bunker in the fairway, you can see there's a big tree on the right hand side of that. But in the distance, I'm just trying to hit a little fade off that. Pretty much to where that car is now. Got away with that. It's a bit left, but I was aiming so far right. Managed to save the day left me 105 yards uphill in the wind which is a comfortable pitching wedge for me just like a little kind of three quarter thing i'm really chuffed with myself for what i did here letting this car go and never usually would do that i would just rush but i'm happy right so back off here reset pick your target pins at the front 105 yards comfortable kind of three quarter -y pitching wedge shot for me pick your line commit to the shot come on nice and smooth Absolutely ripped that. It's one of those ones you get to the top of the swing and you think, hit it harder. Ended up leaving myself a massive putt. This is tricky because it's a good 30 foot downhill left to right. Everything in my brain's telling me that it's really fast, but the greens are so slow. Look at the hand. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Fist pump when it's lagged. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits. That was a really difficult putt. I'm happy with the tap in. I will take these tap ins all day. Thank you, please. Right, 8th hole, 165 yard, par 3, crosswind. Look at that crow freak out when he realises he's in the danger zone. Get out of here, crow. Bail. So I'm going to try and start this on the big tree just left of the pin, the big kind of bushy one. I was between clubs, I thought, a 7 iron fly and a bit lower. Try and cheat it under the wind. And just block it, yeah. Look at the mat, that's it. Blame the mat. It's the mat's fault. It's not you, it's the mat. So I've left myself a bit of a tricky little chip here, chipping uphill to a green that's running away from you. I'm trying to pick a little flat portion here that I can kind of land it on and hopefully I can then gauge the way it's going to react a bit better. So I'm going to hit like a little pitching wedge bump and run thing here. The ground's so soft. And I've absolutely fatted it. That was a bit nervy, but also a terrible shot. Oh, annoying. So now I've still got the trickiness that I had with the chip in that I've got a really long putt here. Uphill at the start and then downhill at the bottom and I've got this for par. Whereas in my head I'm thinking, really, please just two putt this and take a bogey. Because if you three putt this and make a double, you're going to be very annoyed. So come on, get it nice and close, tap in bogey. That's... That's not a tapping bogey. What are you doing, Craig? That's not a tapping bogey, mate. What are you doing? What are you playing at? No wonder I've got so much grey hair. This is ridiculous. Right. Well, you, you've got a four-footer here. Come on. Just outside left. Nice and firm. See if you've got a bottle. Get in. Bet that feels good. That feels like a birdie hole in that one. That feels like a birdie hole in that second one. That was a terrible, terrible hole. Hello. 
Hello Ben, hello Jack, wave. Wave, yeah he's waving. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Golf. How about that for a wildlife section? Answer in the comments below. Are there more or less birds there than the number of shots I will take today? Hint, there are less. So I've realized that out of bounds up the left makes me nervous and almost every hole here there's out of bounds up the left. So I'm trying to just hit a little kind of fady thing off the bunker on the left hand side of the fairway. No way with that wind my two arms getting there. No, that's not bad. That's not bad. The wind's actually saved that from being a lot worse than it was. Right, 175 yards here, got a six iron in hand, try to peel a fade off the middle tree. Come on, dude. That pro tracer's missed it slightly. Got caught up in the wind. Left me a tricky little chip again. Just what you want after fatting a chip to have another one. And there's a repeat performance, two fatted chips in a row. Nice, that's exactly what you want, good. Long par attempt here, just after leaving one short, so make sure you get this one up there, dude. Come on. Same pace back and through. That's what's really helping me with my pace when the greens are a bit quicker. Same pace back and through. Sit, sit. Oh, good, good. Stressful again. Same distance passed. This is not what you want. What happened to the tappins earlier on? Remember the tappins? The tappins were so nice. I love a tappin right now. Right, come on. Right edge. Good. Fist pump. Why are you fist pumping? It's a bogey. Fist pumping a bogey pot. <laughs> Standard. Ah, it's so annoying. That's in my head with the ground being so wet. Like it's proper soaking this ground. You catch your chips a little bit, a little bit heavy, like a touch heavy, and you're just, it's like a couple of feet in front of you. I'm so angry. I am so angry. This is just about to start absolutely pissing me. Oh, come on, give me a break. Good, no, I didn't, I didn't want to hold that.